Hey guys, this is going to be a little bit different than what you're accustomed to. Normally I would give you a little intro and everything. Basically I'm going to be talking about Mego Linux today. As you may or may not know, version 1.0 released just a couple of days ago, so I've gone ahead and loaded it up on my netbook. This is an Asus EPC-1000HE, and as you see here, it's actually installed on the hard drive, and it runs decently. You'll see here I set my background to the Penguin. I thought it was very appropriate. And there, the nice UI just loaded in. Now this is our default interface after you've given it some stuff. By default, there's not going to be anything in here. You're going to have empty appointments, tasks, no unread messages or anything, and four applications here. I've gone ahead and added a couple more. It's not really a big deal to do that. By default, you've got Media Player, Banshee, Chromium Web Browser, Migos Help, and Mail. I've gone ahead and added Neverball and the settings just because they're commonly used apps. Not necessarily something I will be using, but it's nice to have them there. Now you see here, it's actually pulled the latest tweets on my page. It's given the latest appointments from my Gmail account. I have no tasks, of course. It tells me if I have unread emails. All sorts of fun stuff on this My Zone page. It's basically an at-a-glance what you should want to see. If you go to Zones, if you have anything running, they will all show up in here. If you go to the Applications, this has a list of all the applications you've got installed. Here's your favorites, which you can add and remove stuff. If I want to go ahead and take Neverball out, I can unpin it and it will disappear. Take the settings out the same way, but I like having it there. If you go to accessories, here are some accessories. Your archive manager, file browser allows you to actually get into Nautilus and see the file system. There we go, you've got your default home directory. You can browse through that just like you would any standard Nautilus browser. And when you're done, it goes back to your My Zones page. This is actually running a little faster than it was earlier. I'm kind of surprised. You've got a calculator, you've got an editor, you've got a lot of stuff there. I mean, these are a lot of default GNOME apps, which you would expect. Here we've got the Mego Help. Let's take a look and see what's in there. You know, this is actually a lot more responsive than it was the last two times I filmed this. Mego Help, as we can see, it actually goes to a web page. Not terribly useful, but at the same time, it gives you the most up-to-date information every time, so that is appreciated. By the way, Chromium, of course, the default browser. The open source version of Google's Chrome, always a nice thing. Now back in the accessories, you've got settings, which has all the settings you should want to change on this. You've got the default wallpaper you can change pretty easily. You just use it like GNOME, you add and remove here. You go to the system tray where you can say if you want to show it or not. See if I set it there and then go back out of this. I've actually got a system tray that shows what apps are running. On a netbook, that's not a great idea because you lose screen real estate. Under My Zone, you can come in here and tell it to show your calendar and tasks or email alerts. If I turn those off and then go back out, you see there My Zone looks completely different now. It's actually got a lot more space, but at the same time, it's not got all the information it had before. So, entirely up to your preference. I do like being able to customize things. We come back in here and turn off that system tray because I don't want it. So, you can change your language, your email settings, your instant messenger settings, your web accounts date and time, crash reporting, all sorts of hardware related settings over here. Lots of great stuff in there. Back under applications again, you've got some games that come pre-installed and they run pretty decently. Neverball, for example, you see it runs in a window, the audio plays out of the box, hardware seems to work very nicely. By default it's 800 or it's 640 by 480. This is actually a 1024 by 600 screen, so anything above that's not going to look quite right unless you do it full screen and then it stretches it so it doesn't look quite right either. But you see how quickly that actually worked. I was actually kind of surprised. But I can come in here, pick easy, level one, Ready, set, go. and it just plays. I mean, if you're using the trackpad, it's going to be, of course, kind of difficult, but let's go ahead and get out of that. And very, very quickly, we're back at the default interface. I am sh so shocked how fast this is running. But you've got a couple of other options by default. You can go to internet, and there's your browser, your email client, your messenger, and the ability to sync. I was a little confused by this at first, but you've got the option here to sync with all these different services, including Google. If you want to pull down all your Google contacts, you can do that. That said, when I did it, it actually did something strange to my Google contacts and removed them from my phone. So use at your own caution. 
Under media, you've got an image viewer, a media player. Media player is Banshee. Image viewer should probably be Gthumb. I have known. Same difference. Under media, we've also got the webcam, which by default works. Not something that's terribly uncommon nowadays, but it works. See, there you go. That's me with my camera. It's a little slow. It's going to be. So under media, we've looked at all that. Under office, calendar, contacts, and tasks. Not really a an office suite to speak of, but I would assume that you can use Chromium to get to Zoho Office or to Google Docs. Under system tools, you've got your disk usage, disk utility. The garage, I haven't had any luck out of it. If someone in the comments has, has used this before and had luck out of it, let me know. But if I come in here and, for example, if I want to install Tux Paint, it says resolving and then it sort of hangs there and goes to retry. And of course this one time install seems to work. I, I swear the last 10 times I've tried this nothing has worked. Perhaps I just had uh, no luck before and now it's magically working. As I was about to show you there is another package manager. If I come back up to the top I should be able to do this at the same time. Under system tools we've got manage apps. This is actually like Synaptic. Kind of like the add remove software used to be in Ubuntu. Uh, there we go, add remove software. You've got all these packages you can choose from, but pretty much everything in there is already selected in the, the different areas of it. It's probably not going to resolve right now because I am running that other application in the background. But we'll go ahead and close out of that for now and get back to the review. Now under system tools, we've got update systems, so if there is something you want to do, let's just try it because I haven't done it yet. You see here this is using the default GNOME based update checker and that's taken a little bit of time so we'll close it I'll come back to it after this is over. So that's about all it for applications. You see there is a way to use the garage to install new stuff. You've got the status tab which shows you what's happening. This is actually my Twitter account. I can also come back in here and add in a Last.fm account if I'm so inclined. Shows you the latest in just a, a scrolling list of what's going on. If you go to people, this is actually a front end for the empathy messenger. See so here you've got all of the people you've got online. You've got IM settings you can change here. You could just double click on somebody by name. You see I just pick Nick. It goes to a conversation window that takes up the whole screen. And when you're done with that, type you can type in stuff and hit enter at the bottom. You can do all the traditional empathy stuff, close it and you're done. So that's pretty much it as far as empathy. You can of course set yourself offline if you want to there. Keep track of your conversations over here. Under internet, this is the Chromium settings. You see we've got the Mego tab that's already open. Your favorite pages, pages you've been to several times I guess. You can also type in here something like this week in Linux. And it will search the web. Say Google search go to the thisweekinlinux.com or to somewhere else in the history you've been to. I don't want to open that up because it will take a long time and for some reason Flash takes forever and a day to open on this, but it does work out of the box. Now if you go to the media tab, that took quite a while. I'm actually going to cut past it, but that took a long time to open. It was having to preload Banshee in the background, but now that this is open and it's got a list of the songs that are available, if I click the B for Banshee, it will open up the full program, giving me the option to go to the Internet Archive or to Last.fm. Lots of great things, very easy to get to. And I tried that earlier with the Internet Archive, it worked very nicely. So that's the Media tab. You can add new music to that, of course, by going into your devices. If you had a USB drive plugged in, it should show up in here. Other devices would be here. You can put things in your music directory, pictures, videos, whatever else. Your battery count is here, the amount of space, your volume controls. Here is your Bluetooth tab. I don't have a Bluetooth device. Here is your networks list. You've got like a Linksys network in my neighborhood. Uh, you can turn on and off the wired and wireless networking to make an offline mode entirely. You can also come over here to your clock. It is exactly midnight here, so that's not a mistake. You've got your time date, appointments, and tasks here where you can set everything manually if you want to. This is actually being pulled down from Google though, so I kind of like that. I'm, I'm more and more becoming a fan of Mego the more I use it. So that's pretty much all there is to say about Mego. I really enjoy the, the interface where everything sort of pops out at you and everything sort of slides across the screen. One thing I would mention, I would like to see more applications and I'm sure that's coming in the future. For now, it is a very usable cloud-based operating system, but it's a very interesting looking interface. 
It's got a lot of potential and it uses the screen real estate very nicely. So if you haven't tried it already, I will put a link in the doobly-doo. Make sure to go down there and check it out. It works on a majority of netbooks at this point. I haven't been able to get it working in VMware or VirtualBox yet, but uh, if, you ha if you have gotten it working, make sure to let me know how you did it. But that's all for this first look at Migo. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. <laughs>